first time addressing uh, as many as seven to eight uh, colleges of the university. At the outset, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university uh, for giving me this opportunity and to my uh, friend Dr. Uh What I'm going to tell you about is the, the story of success with Bhaskati Rice, which we have achieved at the Indian Agricultural Research Institute. So if I may begin with the first slide. May I have the first slide, please? I'm also thankful to the Honorable Dean for uh, spending time and being with us. Uh, this is a great uh, motivation. Uh, friends, uh, I, I will be talking briefly about the uh, Basmati rice, but how we have uh, brought in the intervention of molecular breeding, marker assisted plant breeding, which each one of you know, to augment our Basmati breeding program. Next. Now, if you see in the next slide, you will find that uh, Basmati rice in India, uh, you know that rice is grown in almost 44 million hectare area. And out of the 44 million hectare area, the area under Basmati rice cultivation is just 2 million hectare. The two are right. Next. Next, please. Okay. Now, in general, there is a perception that uh, all aromatic prices, uh, can you go back? Yeah. In general, there is a perception that all aromatic prices are basmati. But this is not true. We have all basmati prices are aromatic, but all aromatic prices are not basmati. In addition to aroma, the basmati rice must have some defined parameters, which are uh, given as uh, a minimum milk rice length, minimum uh, milk rice breadth, appearance, amylose content, LP spreading value, volume expansion. More than four times on cooking, it happens in case of basmati. Cooked kernel elongation on cooking almost it increases twice in length. It has sweet and appealing taste. So these are the additional features of the rice variety in addition to aroma to be called as basmati. In next slide, you will see. Next, please. Next slide, what you see on the left hand side is the picture of a standing crop of traditional basmati rice varieties. These traditional varieties of basmati rice are very tall, their height is about 160 centimeter, they are photo period sensitive. That means whenever you show the material, it will flower only in the month of October when the day length is reached to a particular duration. It is prone to lodging as on the right hand side you see the crop is completely lost and because of this you get very poor yield about 2.5 tons per hectare. Therefore, in IRI what we decided next, uh, in, in late 60s when Dr. Swaminathan was uh, head of the division of genetics, uh, he conceptualized the idea, in the next slide you will see, he conceptualized the idea of combining the quality of traditional basmati with the high yield and dwarf stature of improved dwarf varieties of rice. And we made, first class was made in 1966, where Pusa Basmati won. Uh, uh, for development of Pusa Basmati won the first semi dwarf variety. The first class was made between Taisho 81 and Basmati 370. And from this class, it took almost 20 years, 20 25 years, to come out with the first Basmati rice variety, which was dwarf, photo period insensitive. And it matured in 135 days, it did not last, and yield potential was 6 tons per hectare, as against 2 tons per hectare in traditional basmati. So, this Pusa Basmati one has been used as a donor in the breeding program, as a commercial variety, and also those who are working in transgenic development, this is a genotype which has got a very good response to tissue culture. Regeneration response is extremely good, and therefore people have been using this variety in France and development also. Next. Next. So this is the photograph of uh, Usa Basmati 1, the first semi dwarf high yielding variety, which was dwarf and uh, having yield potential of 6 to 7 tons per hectare. Next. 
and this came out of almost 20 25 years of uh, hard work starting from 1966 in the next slide you will find that uh, Okay, so we came out with another variety in 2003. Pusa Vasmati 1 was released in 1989. We came out with Pusa Vasmati 1121. And this is the variety which is currently grown on 1.35 million hectare area. And it contributes almost 75% of the total Vasmati rice export. The wonderful feature of this variety includes its extra long grain. And on cooking, the grain length becomes almost 25 mm, 1 inch. On cooking, the rice becomes almost 1 inch long. Next one. So, uh, we developed this Pusa Basanti 1121, which became very popular. And uh, in this picture, you can see how the grain length increases on cooking. On the bottom row, you find Traudi Basanti, traditional Basanti. Middle row is Pusa Basanti 1. And the top row is Pusa Basanti 1121. You have middle rice. And on the right hand side, you have cooked rice, almost one inch in length. So, this is the main feature of this variety because of which it has become very popular with the farmers. Next. And uh, now, almost recovers the major demerits of 1121. 1121, though it was shorter as compared to traditional basmati, but it still it was tall, it was prone to lodging, and it took almost 145 days duration. 1509 has the same quality as Pusa Basmati 1121, but it is dwarf, less than 90 centimeter high. It is early, matures in 120 days, seed to seed maturity, sometimes 150 days it takes, and then its yield potential is 6 tons per hectare. Next. So you can see here in this picture the grain of Pusa Basmati 1121 on the right hand side, the top is the mid rise and the bottom is cooked rice. On the left hand side you see Pusa Vasmati 1509, the top uncooked rice, mill rice and the bottom is cooked rice. And you can see that the grain length of 1509 is as good as that of the Pusa Vasmati 1121, but its grain shape is better on cooking. It almost has uniform shape throughout the length, while 1121 is thicker on one side and thinner on the other side. It doesn't do a very good table look, but 1509 gives a wonderful table look. And I am getting feedback. Just now I got a phone call from Punjab. The farmers have sold after harvesting this crop season and have got the price of 3700 rupees per quintal of paddy. 3700 rupees per quintal of paddy. So this is a big uh, you know, gain for the farmers with reduced duration. 5 to 6 irrigation can be reduced as compared to 1121. The higher yield and uh, one of the major problems in Punjab you find is in Punjab and Haryana that after harvesting paddy people born is five the feet. Because it is combined harvested and the spy is born because immediately wheat crop has to be sown. So this results into a lot of pollution. Now this variety 1509 has got half the biomass that of 1121. And therefore the pollution also by burning strike is reduced uh, drastically. Next slide. Okay, so now when we are working on development of these varieties, what I have shown in this slide is uh, uh, a letter written by All India Rice Exporters Association President, Mr. Vijay Kumar Setia. Uh, you must work in collaboration and in association with the uh, consumer. Who are the people, clientele, for your technology? And if you have their feedback during the process of technology development, then you are more confident about technology. So prior to release, Cynthia has written that this is this new variety is far superior to 1121. It can replace 1121 completely, and its grain quality is better than 1121. Next. This is a field view of this farmer. Now when you develop a technology, it is just not important that you develop technology and it ends there. You have to take as the inventor of the technology, you have to take it to the farmer's field. Now this is the demonstration of this new variety. Last crop season I had grown on a farmer's field in Mirror district. Uh, the farmer is Mr. Tyagi. Excellent crop. And uh, when you see this variety performing well on farmer's field, you get much better confidence than what performance you get on the experimental stage. Next. Okay, so overall what has happened through our research that we have done at IRI that in traditional basmati varieties the duration used to be 160 days 
you see Faraday class the the duration is 160 days this we have brought down to 120 days in Pusa Vasanti 1509 and the E which was in Taraudi Vasanti just 2 tons per hectare now has gone to 6 to 7 tons per hectare now this is an unholy alliance generally we say to variety with longer duration will have higher yield but we have reduced duration and then simultaneously we have increased yield through reformulation breeding by breaking undesirable linkages so it has been possible to improve yield and duration, reduce duration and improve yield simultaneously. Next. And this has resulted in, if you see in 1990, uh, 91, the total export earning from export of Basmati rice was 294 crores, about 55 million US dollars. But in 2012 13, it has gone to 19,391 crores, almost 3.5 billion US dollars. Now, uh, one of the aspects which I have been highlighting all the time that Commerce Ministry, because export is a, is a matter related to Commerce Ministry. So, Commerce Ministry gets 3% uh, stress on this export value. Now, if you take that 3% uh, export earning on this one, almost 300, 400 crores annually they get. But it doesn't come to Ministry of Agriculture, it doesn't come to institutions which are developing technology and commercialization of these technologies relating to export earning. So, we have been pleading in the Ministry of Agriculture that we should approach Commerce Ministry also. Just give us 1% half of this. We don't need any research grant from anybody. Whatever is being earned from our technology is sufficient to carry forward the research program. Next. And uh, because of this impact the technology has made, last year our predecessor Dr. V.P. Singh was awarded Padma Sri by the government of India. The Honorable President is seen there. And year before, in the corner top you see right hand Dr. E.A. Siddhi, Professor E.A. Siddhi, who was a alumni, who is alumni of this uh, great institution. He was awarded Padma Sri last, last year and last year Dr. VP Singh was awarded both for the same uh, you know, commodity Vasmati. Primarily Dr. Siddhi contribution was in Pusa Vasmati 1 and Dr. VP Singh contributed with Pusa Vasmati 1121. He was also associated with Pusa Vasmati 1 development. We were all associated with it, but these were the leaders and uh, the government has given due recognition for developing technology. Next, please. Now, there are so many challenges. The challenges are too many. And uh, in Basmati breeding program particularly, for example, this is a crop that you see is completely burnt by uh, attack of bacterial leaf blight, a disease caused by Gentomonas compactus, that were rising. Now, this is sometimes so deadly that this farmer who had uh, taken on lease uh, about 25 acres land, and the lease cost in Haryana, for example, these days is 35,000 rupees per acre. You have to take on lease from somebody, you have to pay 35,000 rupees per acre. And uh, this crop is completely finished because of bacterial leaf blight. He will not be able to harvest anything from this crop. He will have to simply put fire next. So this is one major challenge for the breeders to tackle. In the next slide, you will see that uh, another field of Pusa Vasanti 1, which is uh, affected by neck glass. Neck blast is a very severe disease caused by paracleria riding and uh, he, the crop is bumper crop you can see good stand full of uh, panicles but when this disease comes all the panicles they dry at the neck and then there is nothing to harvest. So this is another major problem in Basmati. Although it is a problem in non Basmati also but Basmati is more uh, serious situation. Next. Brown plant harbor. You can see on a single plant the number of insects uh, is uh, almost you know close to thousand, thousand more. And when brown plant harbor comes, it sucks the sap from the stem, and as a result, even the developing grains they become dry and the crop will become flat, as you will see in the next slide. There will be nothing to harvest. So the same field at a little later this stage, as you can see in the next slide, is affected by brown plant harbor. You see, long view, the entire crop is completely finished. There is nothing to harvest. Next slide. Now, these are the challenges, particularly biotic stresses. 
Likewise, we have got several abiotic stresses, which include droughts, submergence, salinity. These are the three major abiotic stresses in rice, which create a lot of problems. So, what is the fortunate situation is that for each of these problems which I have just mentioned, bacterial life there are 37 genes known. For blast, we know 103 genes and 345 tutorials have been identified so far. For brown plant, hopper, almost 23 genes are known. And we have for seed flight certain tutorials are identified. Now, in spite of the fact that these many genetic resources are available within rice, we need not to go to bring these from other species. They are in rice varieties. Only thing is that they are not present in the basmati variety, they are present in non basmati sources. So, when we transfer the characters, these uh, resistance to biotic stresses from non basmati to basmati, the quality characters get impaired. But that can be tackled through plant breeding, it's not a major issue. But the issue is that, in spite of the availability of so many genetic resources, why is that we are not able to provide persistent varieties to the farmers? As a matter of fact, it should be made mandatory that any variety of rice which is susceptible to blight, blast, and brown plant hopper will not be released for commercial cultivation in the area where these problems are very serious. Now, if that kind of embargo is good, then probably the efforts will be intensified. Naturally, there is a need to intensify our efforts in these directions. Next. Using these landmarks, you can uh, trace the okay. Uh, all right. So what we did, you know, first we started with bacterial leaf blight. We took uh, recurrent parent, the parent which is used again and again. Back cross method of breeding, you all know, is used in those situations where we have a otherwise very good variety, but it lacks in one or two characters, which can be improved by using a donor parent which has got those traits in very high intensity, but it doesn't have other desirable characters. So you cross it once and then you go for repeated by crossing with the recurrent pattern. So this is what we did here. Pusa was was taken and the donor was IR BB55. It's the line developed from Erie, which carries two genes, XA13 and XA21. So we used that as the donor and Pusa was as the recurrent pattern. And then we followed the marker system, foreground and background selection. These are the two important components in marker assisted backcraft breeding. Foreground selection refers to the selection for the trait under transfer. For example, in this case, we are transferring bacterial bite resistant genes XA13 and XA21. So, selection for XA13 and XA21 is called foreground selection. And background selection is selection for recurrent parent genome. What we want ultimately is Pusa Vasmati 1 in all characters, but with resistance to bacterial blight. So selection for bacterial leaf blight is foreground selection, but selection for all other characters of Pusa Pasmati 1 is background selection. So that can be done through marker assisted selection next. And then we followed this approach of foreground and background selection to uh, in the top slide you can see for XA21 gene, the band present on the upper side and the lower side, these are the two which differentiate the resistant and susceptible plants. And then in the second case, XA13 foreground marker is RG136. And the all plants, they show heterozygous pattern. The susceptible plant has got a single band of 950 base pair, the first lane on the left hand side. And the right hand side, all plants are persistent plant. Next. So this one also combined with the background selection. Background selection can be practiced again using molecular markers. The markers which are polymorphic between donor and recurrent pair. And when you select the segregating progeny, you select those plants which have got the allele of recurrent parent at this marker no side. So this way it is a method by which you can accelerate the backcross mean program. Generally it takes about 6 to 7 backcrosses to recover the recurrent parent. But using marker assisted background selection you can reduce the number of backcrosses to 2. Even in 2 backcrosses you can reconstitute the recurrent parent genome. Okay? All the students are here. I, if I can put a question. In BC1 F1, what is the recurrent parent genome percentage? In bad class 1? 75%. 75%. Now, if I have 100 plant in BC1 F1, 100 plant in BC1 F1, all these plants will have 75% genome of recurrent parent? Then what is 75%? How do you get this? Where do you get this figure 75%? Now tell me what will be the minimum recurrent parent genome percentage and maximum range. 
out of these 100 plants. Hmm? 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 Fifty percent to ninety-five percent. Uh, of course, because the number of genes you are dealing with, there are too many, and therefore uh, it is uh, practically impossible with the population size that we handle in fact our generations is limited, and therefore it is very difficult to reach the upper limit. But minimum fifty percent to hundred percent is ranges. If you take fuel size, for example, fuel size you can recover hundred percent. So the average is of all hundred plants. In BC1 F1, the average comes 75%. That's why we say in BC1 F1, 75% is the average of current parent genome <coughs> recovery. Likewise, in BC2, BC3, each generation, the values that are given to you, they are average of all the plants in the segregating generation. Okay. So that means if it is 50% to 95% in BC1 F1, if you have a ways and means by which you can select a plant to 95%, <coughs> Then you don't need to go for second back class or third back class. Right in BC1 F1, you get a plant with 95%, which you will get otherwise after six generations of back class. So, this is where the markers help in identifying the plants with maximum recovery of the current parent genome. Okay? But also, we must uh, realize that the markers will only help. So, background selection is used for that purpose. Next. We followed this uh, uh, method and then finally we were able to uh, reconstitute Usawa Asmati 1 with bacterial bite resistance and this new variety. Next slide. The new variety, uh, yeah, you see the top one in this dendrogram is Usawa Asmati 1 and just below is one of the lines which was later released as a variety. Next, next slide. We released this next variety as improved Usawa Asmati 1. In this slide, this slide, let me see back. Can yeah. you go ahead? Yeah. Close slide, full of managers, just like Kusabaswati one, and it has got resistance to bacterial deep light. Next slide. So now, once you have developed the variety, you also need to multiply the seed of this variety in large quantity as early as possible. So within the first year of release, we went to farmer's field and in a program called the Mega Seed Project, Mega Seed Project, where we hired a lot of land from farmers, 200, 300 acres, and produced the seed of this variety and farmers in the farmers' participatory seed production program. And uh, we monitor these seed production plants every time at appropriate stage and then seeds were multiplied and then supplied to the farmers. Next. And uh, in the next slide you will see a farmer growing the uh, crop of uh, Pusa, improved Pusa Vasmati 1 and this farmer is empowered to fight bacterial blight. So within a year of release we were able to cover large part of Haryana and Punjab state where this variety is grown. Next. And uh, the next step is that once you have developed the variety, you have to produce the seed of variety which is genetically pure. The nuclear seed production is extremely important. Because here, the value of this variety is because of those two characters that you write, bacterial type resistance, two genes. So you must ensure that in your nuclear seed production block, everything is fine. The gene that you have incorporated in the variety is present, you need to verify. It should be present, you need to verify with markers also in the nuclear seed production block at least so that at later stage no mishap happened because uh, you know in the first year what happened in the seed of this variety was less in the market many traders they started selling Pusa Vasmati 1 in the name of improved Pusa Vasmati 300 rupees a kg, 400 rupees a kg and the farmers purchased it when they grew they could not differentiate because these are isogenic lines they are similar in all respect except for one trait that is bacterial blight and that can be seen only when the disease comes if disease doesn't come then you cannot see the difference. So many traders they were able to make a lot of money sold Pusa Vasmati 1 in the name of improved Pusa Vasmati 1. Since we have marker for both the genes, 
And if we suspected somebody who could collect the leaf sample from his seed production plot or take the lot of seeds from his packet and then analyze and tell whether the gene is present or not. And such persons can be penalized immediately. So all those course of actions have to be put in place by the investigator. Next. Or by a mechanism which institutions develop. So this is what uh, we verify the presence of both the genes and also verify the cooking characters that they have in fact. Next. Uh, after Pusa Vasmati 1 improved, we have released this year in 2013 another. So improved Pusa Vasmati 1 was the first marker assisted derived variety released of commercial cultivation. Now this is the first variety, Pusa 1612. We see developed through marker assisted breeding. The recurrent parent was Pusa Sugan 5, and this variety is widely cultivated in rice potato cropping system, where farmers grow potato in Western Europe, a lot of farmers grow potato. So they grow this variety, which matures in 125 days, and after harvesting this variety, they go for potato. This is also a Basmati variety, which we have improved for assistance to blast disease by incorporating gene PI54 and PIZ5. So these two genes have been incorporated. And now, for your information, we have a separate trial for testing the mass derived varieties, where the testing of the variety is limited only to two years. Normally, you have to test the variety for three years initial variety trial, advanced variety trial, one, advanced variety trial, two. But in this case, you have to have only two years of testing because the variety is similar to the current parent, which is already released and adopted. Only you are verifying the trait that you have incorporated. And therefore, with two years of testing, these varieties can be commercialized. So this was released after two years of testing, and this is the first nil variety uh, ever released for commercial cultivation in the crop. Next. So in Sudan 5, now we have incorporated two genes for blight and two genes for blast also. So four gene pyramid is available now, which we are entering in the coordinated trial this year. Next. Now there is uh, a strategy, what we call marker assisted simultaneous but stepwise by cross breeding, mass BV. Uh, this is adapted, you see, as I mentioned to you in the beginning that most of the genes for resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses, they are present in non basmati background, they are not present in basmati background. And therefore we wanted to create a set of isogenic line, at least in one variety background, for all major genes and QTRs. So that this material is available for the breeding program by any breeder in the country who is working on possibly development. So in this case, we are incorporating seven genes for blast assistance in Pusa Basmati 1. And this strategy is called marker assisted simultaneous but stepwise. So what you do in this case is that you take recurrent parent, class with donor 1, recurrent parent, class with donor 2, recurrent parent, class with donor 3, and then you have three parallel backcross breeding program. After two backcrosses, then you intercross this material to bring all the four genes, five genes together. So this is what we have adopted and now in case of Pusha Vasmati 1, next. We have got uh, isogenic lines carrying one gene, two genes, three genes, four genes and up to seven gene pyramids where marker assisted foreground selection has been used, next. And also the background selection for recovery of recurrent parent genome. These techniques are common techniques uh, which are applied in any backcross reading program. But what you can see here, in addition to marker assisted selection for foreground and background, the phenotypic selection is extremely important. You see here on the top you have got the donor line, in the second row you have got Pusa Basmati 1, recurrent parent. And the bottom three rows, they are Pusa Basmati 1 with genes for blight and uh, with genes for blast, isogenic lines. But their grain length on cooking and before cooking, everything is exactly identical to Pusa Basmati 1. So this selection is phenotypic selection. You do cooking at 1000 plants and after cooking you see which one is elongating, which one is not elongating. The non elongating ones are discarded, the elongating ones they are retained. So phenotypic selection also has to be exercised simultaneously in order to hasten the process of recovery of the current parent genome. Next. So this is one character in rice that we study is called gel consistency. And gel consistency is that you uh, make powder of rice and then you gelatinize it and uh, after heating a certain temperature and then you 
uh, put it flat on the surface and then you record the length that gel travels. So all the lines on the top that you see they are similar to Pusa Vasmati one except the bottom line which is donor from glass resistance means that we got a high gel length. Next. So this is also a part of the metric selection. And this is how isogenic lines look. In the center two rows that you see where Pusa Vasmati one is written, that is the Pusa Vasmati one. And the flanking rows are isogenic lines. Now you can see the whole length you see in terms of height, in terms of maturity, in terms of all other attributes, they are exactly identical. They are, there is no difference except that they have got resistance to glass. Next. So, cooking characters. Here, for example, the donor line that we use in this case for glass, the gene PI9, this donor is very bad donor. It has got red kernel on cooking the grains is split. Now, if you have this kind of cooking in basmati, nobody will like. Otherwise, also nobody will like. So, uh, on the right hand side, you have Pusa Basmati on the left hand side, three rows, you have got Pusa Basmati on isogenic lines, where we have done negative selection for quality characters which are coming from the donor. Selected positive traits for the quality characters coming from the current parent and then recovered the current parent you know, next. And uh, after these lines have been uh, developed, we have put them in the uniform glass nursery, UBM. Uniform glass nursery is conducted on the hot spot location. So why we have several hot spot locations where naturally glass comes in a big way. So you can see, you know, in the, the bed, that long bed you can see there are many lines in between, they are completely, they are finished, we have infected rows and then other successful lines have died, only those which are resistant, they are surviving. So we got Pusa Vasanthi on the top right and on the top left we have Pusa Vasanthi near isolating lines, uniform glass nursery, they have uh, no damage while Pusa Vasanthi one is uh, damaged completely. So you see that all essential characters in terms of grain and cooking quality characters, yield performance, duration is recovered along with resistance to blast injuries. Next. So likewise we had uh, two more varieties, Pusa Vasmati 1121 and Pusa Vasmati 6, uh, which are again very popular varieties and these we have improved for bacterial blight, blast and brown plant half of three problems. Next, you can you can go ahead, you can uh, pass few slides, maybe three four slides. Yeah, next. Because essentially the procedure in these cases remains the same. What is given here is the genes and the markers which are used and the number of plants by class generation that are available. Next. And the recovery of grain and cooking quality characters in these lines, which have got the genes XA13, XA21 and they are as good as Pusa Vasmati 1121. Next. 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 Now, salinity is a major problem. Uh, together with the two colleagues from uh, uh, this university, Dr. Vita and uh, Dr. Wigner, uh, we are working in a network project on incorporating salinity tolerance in uh, Pusa Vasmati 1121, which is grown in Haryana, and Haryana has a lot of practice water. So a, a major beauty of facility tolerance called SALTAL has been uh, you know, identified from a land race from Kerala called Kokali. And this beauty of SALTAL we have transferred through my process to back up breeding in Pusha Basman Next. Essentially the procedure for this also remains the same, my process to foreground selection, background selection. You see Pusha Basman uh, grain uh, before cooking and after cooking. And this uh, occupies of sensitive area, which supports on salinity. Next. We can quickly go to the next slide. Next, same approach of Marcus is to back up reading. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, the, the graphical genotyping of the lines back across the right lines which have been developed and they have got recovery of uh, recurrent parent LS21 to the extent of 98%, 96% and so on. Next. Next. And so these lines we evaluated uh, also at uh, Prisheed, Dr. Vita was involved in evaluation and we could see that some of these lines they stood 
the field salinity level uh, at Trichy, which is a again uh, um, the ideal location for screening material for salinity stress tolerance. Next. So this is the view of the uh, background white lines uh, with salinity tolerance in the background. background. Next. Seedling uh, screening in the sodium chloride solution in hydroponics and the derived lines have got high level of salinity tolerance. Next. So this uh, is growing at Trichy, FL4718 in the middle and then PUSA 1734, one of the bypass drive lines of 1121 at Trichy. Next. So this heterosis uh, overall genetic diversity is not uh, 
uh, only important. Uh, also, what is important is that when you are producing a hybrid, you have the male and female parent in a uh, limited duration of flowering. There must be synchronization of flowering. And therefore, what is the kind of diversity you have in your material within the same flowering group, within early group, within medium early group, within medium group, within late group. And we did that exercise also based on duration these lines were classified. And we could see that there is sufficient genetic diversity within group available for exploitation of atrocious. Next. Okay, so some of these hybrids we developed based on this uh, atrotic affinity pattern and they have been found very prominent. Yes. Go to the next one. We tried to map the genes or uh, the QTS that are involved in expression of fall and trace. Now this is one very contrasting character. On the left hand side you find a land race called Sonasal. This is a short grain aromatic land race. And on the right hand side you have Pusha Basmati Alavitranti. You can see the difference in the grain size, length of grain. And on cooking also you can see the difference is very, very obvious. So we crossed these two lines and generated a recombinant underlying population, real population, and used that real population for mapping QTLs for grain length. And we were able to identify major QTLs explaining about 70% of total primitive variation from this population. Next. So once we know that this is the marker linked with the gene of interest, then using Marker social selection, we can mobilize these QTLs into desired lines. Next. Next. There is the variation in recombinant underlying population from Sonasal to extreme uh, right part of 1121 and the risk in between zone that they have a range of variation that is between the two parental extremes. Next. In this case, you don't see transgressive segregation beyond parental limits. Starter than Sonasal and longer than 1121. And this is so because most of the desirable and undesirable genes they are present in the extreme genotypes and therefore you don't find the uh, uh, segregation uh, beyond the parental limit. So genotyping are two plants next for mapping purpose and then identification of proteins. Okay, so this is QTL on chromosome 3, we got a, a major QTL next. Okay, next. We were also able to identify a major deletion in this region of Sonasal versus 1121. So Sonasal was carrying this major deletion which is typical to start the aromatic crisis from India. So this is a novel finding which we have uh, now sent the paper for publication. Next. The marker which we developed based on this deletion, we have validated in a large set of the file. And in short grain rises, you can define the fragment of a smaller size, and in long grain rises, you can define the fragment of a bigger size. Next. And this marker we are using in breeding for short grain aromatic rises. Next. So these are the QTLs identified for elongation ratio, mileage content, LP spreading value, and aroma. Now, earlier we knew that for aroma, there is only one major gene on chromosome 8 which is called FGR, fragrance gene, but now we have identified QTLs on chromosome 4 and also on chromosome 3. Together, they give much higher intensity of aroma. Next. So this is a marker which is linked with this fragrance gene. And you can see the two fragment sizes. The top one is 90, uh, with 90 base pair fragment and the bottom one is 82 base pair fragment, which is present in the Aromatic lines, all aromatic lines have got a two-pester fragment and the non-aromatic ones have got a 90 pester fragment. So using this you can identify a plant at seedling stage that this is aromatic or non-aromatic. Otherwise what we do generally at the time of maturity we go to the field and when we start selecting plants we pick up the grain, open that and chew it and then feel whether the aroma is there or not. So by doing this exercise you know sometimes you uh, after doing 5, 6, 10 sample selections then your sensory gets saturated you are not able to differentiate whether the aroma is present in the next line or not present. So that becomes difficult. Markers help a lot in doing this exercise. Next. So this is also published in molecular building. Next.
Another important character of rice is saccharin. So generally you find that wild rices they are saccharin prone. And uh, some of the varieties they are very hard facing type. We have one problem in Musa Basmati 1121, this is free facing. So if you harvest the crop today and leave in the field overnight, almost 20-25% of grains will sacker. So then we looked at the variation for saccharin resistance in their problem and identified uh, some of the lines which were having certain tolerance, and in fact the markers, and these markers we are using now to incorporate certain tolerance in Kusawa's particular Next one. So, this is the uh, description of the different uh, exams and implants of this particular gene. It is peculiar for certain resistance, PSH1 and Kunjo1. And uh, it has got the four uh, exams and uh, uh, how the varieties differ with respect to their haplotype, the early constitution. And based on this, we can identify which one is going to be tolerant and which one is going to be susceptible. Next. Okay, likewise, uh, PAP1 is a gene which has been recently cloned. Uh, this is called PS PAP, Phosphorus is called recent tolerance gene. So, uh, some of the varieties, uh, you know, they are uh, poor uh, in phosphorus uptake. But if we incorporate this POP1 gene, then phosphorus efficiency is increased. Now, we analyzed the variation at POP1 locus in uh, Basmati germ and surprisingly, we found that uh, most of our Basmati varieties, they have POP1 locus intact. And therefore, uh, now we are trying to do experimentation with different level of phosphorus application to see that if they are doing uh, better even at the low level of phosphorus availability in the soil. Next. And there are uh, one persistent vector of breeding program and component progression also uh, which are under way. Then we have mapped the uh, genes for in and in related components using recombinant and reliant population. You can go on clicking because uh, I, I can match the screen noise too. So here we had the recombinant gender lines uh, developed from uh, uh, a new plant type material crossed with JAR and you can see the kind of variation that happens for grain number, almost 700 to 800 days per pancake. And this population we use for mapping genes for grain number, another recombinant in this slide. Uh, the real population showed uh, sort of continuous variation and uh, we were able to identify almost 51 novel QTLs. This is the view of the real population. The two arrows indicate the position of parental lines in terms of molecular uh, 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 profile. And then uh, you can see that the all 300 risks, they make a concentric ring, indicating thereby that there has been a complete resuffling of genome through multiple cycle of meiosis. The risks have advantage that they are produced through multiple cycle of meiosis and therefore they have extensive recombination and you get this kind of picture. So it's ideal population for mapping QTL. Next. So several QTLs were identified in this case and 51 QTLs were now reported for the first time uh, out of 128. Next. This paper came in BMC plant biology. Next. Another disease that we are facing problem with in, in North India is Pokani. So Pokani is a Japanese word which means a tourist plant uh, where the plant uh, gets infected with uh, uh, fusarium uh, and uh, because of that the delicacy production happens and they start to grow taller and after that sometimes they dry completely. So this variety 1121 is highly susceptible to Pokani disease. Almost under artificial inoculation, we find that 80 percent plants are affected, and we have a breeding line 1342, which has got 20% infection. So these two, we have now a real population that we are using for mapping genes for the kind of resistance. Next, so the farmer is standing with the elongated plants after clearly infection. Chalkiness is another important uh, character, important in the sense that it's an undesirable character. On the top, you find that uh, there is high degree of chalkiness in a new plant type derived material, Pusar 266, and uh, bottom you have the variety in Jaya. And these two we have got, they have extreme uh, difference for the chalkiness, so we cross this and we identified the QTL for real chalkiness 
and uh, markers for this evening are using markers which are building for developing lines with uh, reduced chartiness because chartiness results into bro broken percentage being very high. If the higher chartiness percentage is there, the broken percentage is very high. So by uh, reducing chartiness, you can increase the head rise recovery. Next. I think we are coming towards the end. Uh, just one slide, go to the next one. Uh, Dr. Slacker, uh, here we are working together on a project called Golden Rice Project, next one. And uh, you all know that rice that we eat, generally it is poor in nutrition. It doesn't have iron, it doesn't have zinc, uh, very little, and it does not have pro-vitamin A at all, beta carotene. Pro-vitamin A is used as a precursor in our system, human body, to, to, to make vitamin A. So those who are dependent on rice, uh, as a staple food, they suffer from vitamin E deficiency. In order to solve this problem, two scientists, Hugo Patricus and Peter Baer, one from Sweden, another from Germany, they isolated genes from Daphrobil, a flowering plant, and another gene from bacteria, Yuvinia ludovora, the phytoin desaturase and phytoin synthase genes uh, from Daphrobil and phytoin desaturase from Yuvinia. And these two genes together were put in rice plant. And uh, this starts synthesizing in grains the beta carotene and therefore the color of this rice become uh, golden in color and so it is called golden rice technology. Now it, is, uh, uh, it has been uh, calculated that if you take 100 grams of this rice, golden rice, which has about 25 microgram of uh, you know, uh, total carotene, that will meet the requirement, daily requirement of 300 to 400 uh, gram, micrograms of uh, vitamin E of the or children are pregnant women. So this, we are, uh, the variety in which the original transgenic lines were developed by Ingo and Peter and other groups, they were available in the American long grain rice varieties, cocoa tree and uh, cake orange. They cannot be cultivated in Indian countries. And therefore, the DBT started a program where in three centers, TNAU, uh, DRR and IRI, they started working in transferring through marker assisted by cross breeding this pro vitamin A character from original donor came on it into the Indian rice varieties. So uh, DNA is working on ASD 16 and ADT 43. Just uh, today I saw in the glass house excellent material. Uh, at IRI we are working in uh, Sorna and the DRR is working on DPT 504 and NTU 10. So total we are improving five varieties for pro in addition to that uh, Erie has done a few varieties. The next slide you will see the Sorana lines which we have developed in the background of uh, with the golden rice character. On the right hand side you find golden Sorana and on the left hand side you find Sorana normal which does not have pro vitamin A and this has got uh, pro vitamin A about 20 25 microgram. Now you can see one thing very peculiar in this case that uh, there is some white spot coming in the yellow ones. Okay? What is that white is white? Anybody? So that portion is embryo and this gene is expressed in endosperm specific promoter. So you can see how precise the expression is. The embryo is looking white and the rest portion is yellow because of beta carotene expression. Next. I think this would be the last one. Let's go to the next one. Next one. The marker system background medium now has become a integral part of plant breeding program at many places. Some of the universities are meeting ENAU, PAU and uh, many places, DRR, IRI, but a lot more has to happen. Next. So when you are doing research, you should also find time to bring people who matter in decision making. If you are able to convince those people, then your research will see the light of the day faster. So here is Minister uh, Harish Trawa, uh, Minister of the State for Agriculture, visiting our Vasmati plant, being explained about the new variety, Pusha 1509. Next. Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. Paroda, and uh, some leaders from BJP party. On the right hand bottom side, Dr. S.A. Party, Parma Director IRI, is one of the member parliament from Karnataka. Next.
So uh, on the top left you will see the man in beer is uh, Abhijit Singh, who is a member of the planning commission. And then right, uh, right side is uh, Mr. Basu, Secretary of the Health Government of India, DGICR, on the left bottom, and DDG, Prashna Isha Dr. Shapundata. Next. This is Minister of Agriculture from Vietnam, Bui Ba Bang. You can see the difference. Bang Ba is my classmate. We did PhD together. And he is Minister of Agriculture in Vietnam. Now, he, he worked for his PhD with Dr. Swaminathan. He published five papers on critical five genetics. And if you have a minister like this of agriculture, you can have you know, uh, many things, problems will automatically get solved. Otherwise, it is very difficult to explain uh, uh, quality in particular, uh, what is happening in science, why it takes time, sometimes it is very difficult to explain these people. Then on the right hand side top you have the Minister of Agriculture from Bangladesh and bottom we have the Minister of Agriculture from Myanmar. <laughs> These are all our good neighbors who are nice and defining commodity. So uh, it's important to have them in confidence. And then with the left top we have uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and KD team visiting and then Ingo Portricus on the right hand side you see top there and David Mangel, the man of submergence one, sub one. And the right bottom is the team from uh, Rice Tech Company, which has launched a new uh, sister concern in India called Saw, uh, Sawana Seeds. So they are working on TGMS based hybrid accident, hybrid they have in pipeline. Yes. <coughs> Dr. Kos, Professor ESCD, <coughs> Deepak Prental, Palmer Rice National Delhi University. So, many times you have to make efforts to bring these people. It doesn't happen automatically. So, you have to be after them. And whenever there is a opportunity, you there once, twice, thrice, four times, if you are after them, sometimes they will find time. Otherwise, these are very busy people to find time to come and see people. Next. So, that's uh, NIIB director, Dr. Bengali Babu. And on the left top, you have uh, uh, Dr. Freeman. Freeman is the grand old man of Rice. He is 95 years old now. He was the first coordinator of Rice, all India coordinator of Rice, along with his yeah. software. And even at the age of 95, last year he came, 96 now, he didn't mind walking on the buns with the help of the sleep. That's the kind of commitment that you have, attachment with the crop that you have with these people. Traveling from US, uh, 20 hours long flight, you know, and such a tall person of six and a half feet height, it is not an uh, easy job to lift the body and put in plane. But, but that's the commitment, and when you have will, there is a will.